Happy Thursday, everybody. We are here tonight with a one sheet wonder. I know you're thinking to yourself, what's a one sheet wonder? <laughs> I can't actually remember if we have done a one sheet wonder before. Um, they are lots of fun to do. And I'm just keying up because I realized I, one of the key parts of a one sheet wonder is the cutting guide, which I did not actually queue up before I started. That would have been good. You, you know, I'm never remembering it just off the top of my head. So, so yes, it's wonder time. Um, I'm having lots of energy tonight. Um, Yawn, uh, Sir Puppiness slept from 1230 till 630 last night. Tamara's on time. So yeah, best sleep I've had in a week and I am raring to go. Um, I've been in production mode here, getting stuff done. Um, you can tell chaos ensues in the other one. Um, oh, I am not liking the look of this screen. It's been so clear up until now. Why is it all fuzzy? Tamara, is it fuzzy at your side? Because my, my Zoom looks fine. My Facebook looks fuzzy. Oh, here we go again. Hello, Mary. Welcome to Thursday night craziness. Um, I'm very happy how this turned out. I didn't know where to look to find you tonight. This is not, uh, the YouTube's not working. Yes, a bit fuzzy, fine for you. I don't know what is going on. Um, I try, I always try YouTube because I'd like to go on YouTube, but I haven't been able to figure out why it won't stream from YouTube. It did perfectly fine. I have no idea what changed and all of a sudden now it doesn't work. Um, so I can do it this way to get the recording at least. <laughs> and then I just put it on YouTube as soon as I'm done. Um, I do actually have it on my list of, you know, things to do to, I don't, I, I, as I'm, as I'm talking, I'm looking at things. I have no idea why I'm looking at things. I have no idea how to fix this. Um, I am looking to uh, set up some reminders so that I can tell people this is where I'm going at this time. Um, but I'm always, uh, I'm always thinking, what's well, on the schedule? Now oh, this will be the week I start doing a reminder and then I just get distracted, squirrel and off I go and I forget. Yeah, yeah. Is everything fuzzy or just my ears? Oh, does my header still have the YouTube logo? See, I got to update that. I it, it took me so long to get all those little icons on there and lined up that I keep forgetting now. And now they're just I just automatically reuse the same one. Thank you. I'm gonna make a note of that. To uh, I also decided the other day that I was gonna change it, and I meant to update the cap the calendar for my. For my later time on Tuesday, and I forgot about that too. So I'm gonna make a note right now because you know that I will never remember. Um, and if anybody has any ideas on why YouTube all of a sudden doesn't work when it used to work just fine, let me know. <laughs> uh, YouTube, the Facebook, perfect. All righty then. All right. So yeah, like I said, I had a great night last night. Oh, hello, Shelly. Welcome to the crazy. Um, it is this and that Thursday, and tonight's this is um, a one sheet wonder. I was kind of hoping that I might be able to at the last minute throw in a little uh, unboxing because my paper pumpkin is supposed to arrive today. But alas, it is seven o'clock at night and it has not. So I'm pretty sure it's not going to. Oh, that's a good idea, Tamara. I always forget about that tech site. All right, so it takes a village. This whole thing, it takes a village. Um, SU tech site. Same. This, I also, um, I think I got this habit from my dad, actually. I always have a pen and paper near me somewhere, either on my desk, in my bag. I have one in my nightstand, just in case in the middle of the night, I have an idea that needs to be written down. So let's see what time is it? 7.04, I rambled. Okay. Um, I, I don't know what my obsession with note cards is lately. I will be honest with you. I'm totally obsessed with them lately. Every time I see something, I'm like, oh, can I do that on a note card size? <laughs> I don't know why. Um, I, I, part of me, I think, knows how easy it is for somebody who does not have a extensive craft room full of stuff to use note cards. 
Um, they are economical. They are pre-cut. They're pre-scored. They come with envelopes. Like, they're just awesome. So I think in the back of my mind, I'm like, if I can't, if I, you know, can't interest somebody in, you know, coming to my, <laughs> coming into my obsession level, um, maybe we can, people can be quite happy making cards on note cards, but everything I do, I try on a note card. So I'm going to show you how to do this one sheet wonder. And the samples I made ahead of time, um, I made on note cards. <laughs> Spoiler alert, note cards. So this, this uh, one sheet wonder, and I just wrote it, oh, it comes from Brenda Nelson, fellow Edmontonian, um, which I, I didn't actually see it from her though, but I did see it from my lovely friend Tamara, who did this a couple of weeks ago. And I've seen lots of one sheet wonders. Some of them are done with six by six. Sometimes they're called a double one sheet wonder. And there, there might be two pieces of paper. Sometimes they're done with 12 by 12s, but they tend to be called somewhere along the way, it will say one sheet or double sheet wonder. Um, and they are awesome. And they're a great way to make a bunch of cards. You get out one sort of one theme of cards going, get out some card stuff, get out some coordinating colors, get some DSP going. And uh, for the most part, you can usually use up a lot of your DSP too. And then you get this nice little theme of things. I need lots of birthday cards, so mine all say birthday, but you could make them say all sorts of different things. Um, and a lot of times they're big blocky things. So the one that I liked the most about this one, and I thought, oh, I have to do this one. Um, it had a lot of smaller pieces and some more interesting layouts. So well done, Brenda and Tamara. So here we go. And, and those of you who know me will be super impressed because with the exception of the labels, which I have like 15 of them sitting on the desk beside me. Cause when I cut out one label, I cut out 15. Um, and then the next time I need one label, if it's not one I already have cut, I'll cut another 15. And so I, I always have a ton of them. So yes, technically they're die cuts, but they're also just uh, like, I have a basket of them beside me at all times. There are no die cuts, no additional die cuts on any of these cards. Are you proud of me? <laughs> I kept it simple. Look at me go. So I'll do that maybe a little slower so you can actually see. Wah. There's one of them. Um, the other thing I was doing as I was doing this was I thought I'm going to show people different backgrounds. So in this case, you can take your one sheet wonder and you can add, a, I know Tamara, I know you're shocked. You can add a little stamping. And in this case, I stamped off. So it was just kind of a light little bit of stamping. You can use DSP as a background as well. I love this stuff. The package of paper, the mm, welcome home. It's not called welcome home. I don't think, I think I just made that up. It's got the word home in it. It's called heart and home. <laughs> Um, and the back side of it is all this white wood. I love it. Might have to buy a couple hundred packs of that because this is, I just love this white background that's a little bit elevated. Let's sound all posh tonight. Elevated. Uh, note cards for thank yous for baking customers. Oh, that's perfect, Mary. That, I mean, that is perfect. Um, and the thing is, you can mail these, right? If they were just a bit smaller and you couldn't mail them, I don't think I'd be as obsessed with them, but you can mail them. And they're awesome. Uh, this one, plain background. And sometimes it's hard. Like you see other people make a card and there'll be lots of white on it. And you're like, oh my God, that's amazing. And then you make it and you're like, eh. but I, I loved it. So this one, I left white. You'll notice I'm using the same blue gems on all of them too, because I cannot get enough of these blue gems and wish I had stocked up on them before they sold out. But that's okay. Cause the new catalog's full of all sorts of yummy embellishments. So I'll make do with those. Um, so yeah, this one was kind of a plain background. And then this one, I'm looking at my screen and I'm thinking, is it the way I'm sitting? Why is everything cockeyed tonight as I do it? Um, and this one is uh, embossed. And again, I tend to have <laughs> random things beside me. So this is actually embossed with evergreens. I cannot believe this, this embossing folder is retiring. Uh, it will not retire from my craft room because what self-respecting forester, forest stranger does not have um, this lovely tree embossing folder in their repertoire. Um, so that's why it has this on it, but it, I like it because it's nice and full and very textured. So those are the options. So these are the four cards. So I'm going to show you how I made them. Only this time, oh, and plus envelopes stamped also. Uh, plus I'm going to uh, make them full size. And you know, part of the reason I'm, I have to make sure I make them at least full size is because I love, 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 love this happy birthday font. And I made this label to put on one of the note cards and it was just a touch too big for the note cards. It, 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 it actually fit the note card. It just covered too much of the paper. And I didn't want to do that. It's pretty paper. So here's the thing with the one sheet wonder. You'll need to plan ahead and have some card bases. I have extras. So two of the cards are landscape and two of the cards are portraits. 
Um, we made some layers. And so these can be any color you want. I'm just keeping it simple because I like this. I like this, um, this clean sort of white look. So we have those. Um, I made some full size. These are three and three quarter by five uh, card layers to go on the front. And you'll notice um, I, this time I, I went with basically embossing, although I did use a different one every time. One of these times I'll make life simple myself and just use the same embossing folder. But I thought, this is why I have the bees out. I don't know if you noticed that at the beginning, I was, I was taking out my little adorable bees because these are about to retire. So I have to you know, use them as much as possible right now. But I thought if I have bees, I have to have hives. I think the hive folder is staying though. And this, you know, even if you don't use it like the bee theme, it's just cool hexagons. This is a super nice embossing folder. Uh, one of my all time favorites, unfortunately retiring. Um, and then yes, I did leave one blank and I'll show you in a bit that I tend to do this. And then once I've got the pieces cut, then I will actually decide uh, which one's gonna go with which one because I haven't actually decided that yet. Now I've covered up my little map. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. In this case, we are using a six by six one sheet wonder. So I'm starting with a piece of um, six by six DFP and I have to adjust a couple things here because I cannot tell if I'm on screen because I just covered it up with my map. There we go. So like I said, sometimes it's 12 by 12, sometimes it'll be a double. In this case, we're using six by six. And for this particular pattern or layout, um, you want a little bit smaller pattern, non-directional, because I think I moved these pieces back and forth. And, and you want to like both sides because um, some pieces you notice for the flower and some pieces were the yellow. Now, if you happen to have your favorite DSP and perhaps you're not terribly fond of the backside of it, um, I don't know why backside, I'm like a 12 year old boy, backside made me want to laugh now. Um, then just pick two six by six pieces and you'll be able to make eight cards instead of four. But yeah, it's ideal if you can find one where you get both from the same thing. So what we're gonna do now, and I'm gonna do this as I go, I'm just gonna set them off to the side um, here, but I'm gonna take this and I'm using the map, which I will post, I, I will put the samples and the size of the layers and everything like that and this map in my blog on Saturday. Um, if you desperately need it before then let me know, otherwise it will be in my, my blog on Saturday morning. But for now, I'm just gonna cut it here just, to, just so you can kind of see how the, the whole process goes. The thing you have to watch for when you're doing a one sheet wonder, I did mean to print this off, quite honestly. I did, so I could show you the thing. Uh, and I, <laughs> good puppy, I got totally distracted by the puppy and my son fighting to get his harness on him so we could take him for a walk. And I totally forgot to print it. Um, the thing you have to do is, when you look at this is you just have to watch and see and make sure that you don't make one cut, um, like a vertical cut that ends up making like too short here. I'll show you when we get to the end piece. So make sure that, because that what I know what I just said made absolutely no sense. Um, so make sure that as you're doing this, and now that I'm back on, I can do this, um, that yeah, have a good look at where all the cuts are gonna be, envision all the cuts first, so you make sure you don't like cut across something you don't want to. Otherwise, you'll have to take a second piece of paper out, recut it, make the most of all the pieces you have, and once again, you'll just have double the cards when you're done. So this first one, I'm gonna cut just a one inch strip, and then I'm gonna cut these in half. So these are now, one by three strips. I'm just gonna set those off to the side. And this is generally how it goes, right? You're gonna use this, you're gonna make little pieces. It'll tell you, it'll tell you what size to cut in one direction and then cut them in half. And they're not, they're not, um, most, most of the one sheet wonders I've seen are not, um, you know, take a six by six and cut it, you know, three by three four three by threes, you could do that. But most of them have a variety of things so that each one of the layouts is a little bit different. Uh, they all coordinate, you can use the same color cardstock and ink. So it makes for, you can make a lot of cards with less supplies than you would need to, but they all are slightly different layouts, but they coordinate very nicely. Um, I personally think if you're giving somebody a gift, like you want to gift them with a bunch of cards or something, this is a great way to do it because you can tell it's a bit of a theme. So if you know somebody, um, you know, really likes, I, I have absolutely no idea what flowers these are. I was going to say petunias, but I have no idea what these are. If you know that somebody really likes these flowers, then it's very nice to make a whole set of them, but like I said, you can make them slightly different. So I got my first strip was, let me see, an inch, then an inch and a quarter, then two, this one's half an inch. Uh, like I said, I, I wasn't expecting you to remember these measurements. I'm just trying to give you an idea of 
how we did this. Move that out of the way before I cut it off. Now, in this case, I'm down to the last piece. So I've cut all my other pieces. Try to move those back here. Right. So this is basically what this picture looks like. Okay. It's telling me. And then I've got my strip on the end. So this is what I have left. But what I need to do is I need to make sure. So I've been cutting everything this way, right? But I need to make sure I cut the chunk off here first before I make that last vertical cut. That is basically what I meant before. So I'm going to go and hmm, see, turn that one sideways. So I'm going to get one more big kind of square. It's not quite a square. And then I'm going to go back, turn this back vertical again. And look at my very tiny thing to see what it says. It says one inch. I'm going to cut the last piece off. And then this one that I've cut now actually gets cut in half as well. Three and a quarter. So I am going to, I'm going to put all my little pieces here. And I'm going to put my little thing away and see if I can keep them at even close to being. I, I see now as I put those pieces down that way, I flipped one of them over that I have obviously kept something crooked. And there we go. So now, it seems like my, uh, my camera's taking a second to catch up. So now I have all my little pieces that I want to put up, put down. And I need my card bases. So this is what I think is the best way to do this. If you're copying directly, even from the other person that you're copying, um, you know, maybe sometimes, and again, I'm going to hear Tamara laughing her head off as I say this, maybe sometimes you don't want to do them exactly as you see them laid out. <laughs> uh, and yes, I, that, that is frequently what I do. I will frequently uh, change things up a little bit. Um, as you know, I like to cut my cards so they all tent. So sometimes um, I'll just switch the thing from being portrait to landscape just so it will tent the way that I want it to. In this case, we have two portrait and two landscape. And because I've already made them once, I know that I want to make them the same way because that's the whole point of me showing you the difference. <laughs> but I also know that I tried them. Now, I will tell you that when I made the first set, when I made the samples, I did lay them all out before I, I put anything down. So I did do it that way just to make sure. Um, I think I made one slightly different than the way I saw Tamara make it. Um, not enough that you probably even notice it if you looked at mine and hers together, but, but I did make one slightly different just because I chose to. Uh, and I, I think it was just the way I put the squares out. So here's what I recommend. Take your bases, you know which bases you have and take your layers that you've picked up and you can always change this afterwards. But for now, we're just going to put everything down without gluing it. Um, and even this card where I left, where I left it plain, um, I am leaving it with a layer because one, it's easier to pick it up if I want to. But also, if I decide that I'm going to tie um, a ribbon around or something, I actually like to tie the ribbon around the layer and then just pop the layer up because I think it makes it a little bit smoother. I know it's a mere gap. Um, I know I'm such a rebel. People always find it so funny because, I mean, my job for the last however long before I retired was the policy person to tell people, you know, how to do things. And, um, and then for a while there, I audited to make sure that they followed the rules. And yet, I am not always, I, I, I guess the important rules, <laughs> safety rules, I, I never, that was never my issue. But when it comes to creativity, I guess I'm a rebel. I'm a rule breaker. So one thing I am going to tell you, and I'm going to show you the cards afterwards, when I did this, I really, really liked um, the one layout. So I'm actually going to switch that right now. I really liked, so I can, so I can show you my example. I really liked this one layout with no stamping, no anything. But I needed to put stamping on at least one of them, and the, I didn't want to put stamping on the other one. So this is what you do. I've, I've taken my pieces, and now I lay them out. Now I'm cheating because instead of looking at a picture, because usually whoever designed this would have made a picture. Instead of looking at a picture, I'm just looking at the cards I already made because it's easier for me. And this is the card where I stamped, like I did a little bit of background stamping on it. But like I said, ideally, oops, that's not the way I want that. Um, I loved it just without any stamping at all. So I'm going to, that's not exactly the same circle, but that'll work. I'm going to put this, um, I'm going to put this together this way without stamping it. And I might, I might in the end not stamp it at all this time just to see. So this was one of the layouts. So that's this one. 
right? So imagine that I'm looking at the, the map that they set up. Um, hello, Melanie. Um, so yeah, imagine I'm just looking at somebody else's picture or the diagram or whatever they had. So I'm just cheating by looking at this because like I said, I forgot to do the printing. So this is that layout. I put the circle up a little bit more on this one. The circle's down because I did do the stamping, but I, I quite like this one with no stamping whatsoever. And then, yeah, just instead of I'll put the, I'll put the circle up a little higher. So I'll put my little blue gems in the white spot. Boom, Bob's your uncle. Okay, so there's one of my layouts. And then one of the other layouts. So this is what we're doing, right? We're gonna, oops, we'll do this one first because it's super easy. Um, so on the note card, I did it the other way. So this is what I'm gonna try. Oops, just a minute. <laughs> just realized you can't actually see that. There we go. So on the note card, I did the yellow on the bottom with the floral on top. And I thought, maybe I'll do it the other way. But guess what? This is why you don't glue things down. I don't actually like it that way. So I'm gonna go back into the way it was because I like it better that way. So I'm gonna do this one. And then I did, I did pre-cut, um, like I said, I always have a ton of these. So I did pre-cut this one. I do like that, um, that label. And one of these, one of these is getting a big happy birthday. Actually, it might even be this one here. Let's try. Because I just, this, this is from the sweet, again. Okay, so I was thinking earlier today, I'm sorry, total squirrel moment. Um, you know, people make New Year's resolutions. I figure I need to make new annual catalog resolutions because as I was doing this earlier and I thought, I need the ice cream, I need the ice cream set. Now the ice cream set starts with the word sweet and I'm not actually sure where I put it. Oh, there we go. It's, called, it's funny enough, it's called sweet ice cream. Um, and I love this happy birthday and it's unfortunately retiring, um, but this big bold happy birthday is just awesome. But as I was thinking this in my head, I thought I really need to learn the names of the sets and just stop calling them whatever I want. I really should learn the proper names. So I've decided I'm making a new annual catalog resolution. And that is to learn the proper names of things and not just guess. Um, I know them for other people and certain things like imprint in my brain really quickly. And then other ones, no matter how hard I try, I cannot remember the name of the set. I'm not sure I'm gonna leave that happy birthday there, but it's gonna stay there for now. Okay, then we're gonna take our last pieces. Do, 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 do. That was this one again. We're doing with the yellow, and um, see, obviously, when I when I cut this, it didn't matter for this for this particular pattern, right? It was all just it's all just pattern, um, and this does not bother me. But it's very possible this could bother you, because if you'll notice on my note card where I was doing it, um, and then this one, which is not glued down, so I will be very careful. Do you notice the yellow layer? In one case, we have ruffles or scallops or whatever going horizontal, which kind of makes sense to me. The vertical ones, not as much. But when I started cutting this, I never even looked at the backside. I knew it was a pattern and I knew it didn't matter. So if it does matter, that would be something you'd look at before you start cutting. Oops. Uh, yeah. And then in this case on the note card, I just thought it was fun to put it off to the side. Um, Another tip when you're putting your when you're putting your sentiments down, uh, this one has a lot of pink in these flowers, and it's just luck of the draw the way this strip cut. Um, sometimes when you're cutting, if you know what you're if you look at your thing ahead of time, like your little map, and you look at your stuff, sometimes you can adjust accordingly if there's a specific piece you want. But generally, you just go with what you get. So in this case, there's pink on the end, a couple of yellows and blues, which is good and pink in the middle. And, and honestly, I just don't want a bunch of pink on my card at this point. So yeah, I could put it there. Now that is not why I did it offset on the other one. I just liked it offset. But in this case, the offset would color the pink. Now, if I wanted to get rid of the yellow and have more pink because it's more colorful, I'll just put it on that side. Well, I'm gonna leave it there now because I actually quite like that. Uh, let me see. Oh, and then we're down to the last one. So our last one is these pieces that are left. <laughs> I'm not sure why I keep singing to myself today, but I'm guessing I sound like a bit of a goof on the, on the thing as you hear me humming to myself. But hey, not the first time I've looked like a goof. Eh, I like to lean into my crazy. Okay, where'd my other card go? There it is. Okay, so this one I had the most fun with. I did not purposely leave this one to last, but this one I had the most fun with. So when I was looking at Tamara's, 
And I really should at one point go look at Brenda's. Um, I really should go find her little thing and put a little note on there saying, hey, I love your layout. Um, oh, see, in this one, so this is this is why you want to pick non-directional paper, like paper that doesn't absolutely have to go one direction, because this one, the piece is right. So somehow, oh, because on the other card, it's wrong. Okay, I was going to say somehow I managed to get half right and half wrong, but I didn't, because on the note card, I just never noticed before. Those ones are sideways. Um, so yeah, the layout, I was looking at her layout and I was like, is that this piece? Is that that piece? And it was just because her, her watermark was over top of part of it. So I just guessed and then I just played with it. So in this case, I went something like this and I actually had it. I had a really good layout. I liked it a little bit better before I picked it up to start gluing it down. And then I forgot what I did. And then we put a piece over here. Uh, this is not exactly how the note card says, but I'm just, I'm just, you know, doing whatever at this point. Um, I have no idea what tag I'm going to use. Do I want to use the same tag? I'm just going to make more happy birthday cards. Mm -hmm. But this is basically what we're going to do, right? So we're going to take our little pieces and we're going to decide if we're going to follow the instructions or just do what you want <laughs> uh, because it is crafting. You're allowed to just do what you want. <laughs> See, and this is this is why you don't glue it down because there's something wrong with this. <laughs> these ones are perfect. Like the way they laid laid out, I'm good with all three of these. These are great. Um, yeah, just keep trying to move these away. But this one, something's something's not right. So I'm gonna play with it a little bit and figure out what makes it right. <laughs> I just don't know what it is yet. <laughs> and if it really matters to you which way the DSP is, you'll want to make sure that that these pieces go up and down, or sorry, the these ones are horizontal. Because um, if you turn this piece sideways, you're going to have your the same DSP is going in two different directions. So if that's going to bother you, don't do it that way. But if it doesn't, then there you go. Oh, see now that one I like. I don't know. It is it is all personal preference. Let's face it. So now I have my layouts. Um, I think that this happy birthday is not going to work for me over there. I like this one back on there. Or let's see. I also made I also made this, <laughs> and then it was huge. That's yeah, still huge. Nope, that's not going to work either. <laughs> this is this is the trial and error part. Oh, see now here we go. Here we go. We have lift off. I really should start gluing some of these out. Okay, so this one, I actually really like this label on it. But I just have to make a few adjustments now because now it's covering up too much of my DSP and I like my DSP and I want to see it. And I'm kind of, and, I, and again, it's just personal preference. I'm kind of trying to make it so that the white label on the white background has a bit of DSP to sort of, um, it, it's almost like the, these labels, I can't put layers on these labels because I don't have the exact same layers to go with them. Oh, there we go. But I'm trying to give it so that it's not just like the white doesn't just bleed into the white and kind of lose itself. I want it to, uh, oh, so there we go. Now I'm happy. Um, I, I want it to sort of be a little bit of a buffer. It doesn't have to be on all the sides because it's on enough of the sides that it will keep it from like just sort of fading into the background. So there we go. Ta-da. Let me go back to having that one there. I do want to use, I love this label. This um, tag, uh, it's not a tag, ticket from the uh, sports fan bundle. I love the shape of this, but it is a little bit big and will cover my entire piece of DSP. So that's not going to work. How about one of these tags? Nope, not working for me. I do like the way this one looked. I think this one's a little bit small on here, but I think I did not do it on any of the note cards, but I think on these ones, I might just add a bit of ribbon to them. Pardon the noise as I slide around. Uh, this ribbon, oh, this luscious, luscious ribbon, they came in a two pack. Oh, it actually came as Daffodil Delight. That's perfect. That's the other color. Uh, and this is Misty Moonlight, the sadly soon to be retired, lovely, lovely blue. 
may have 42 of those in vanilla. Oh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> ah, sorry, that's funny. Um, <laughs> this ribbon is awesome. I love this ribbon. But this blue ribbon, I think, is going to go very nicely here. So I think I'm going to keep with the smaller little label. Um, everything. I think it's the perfect size on this card. And, and these note cards are really, they're just a bit smaller. Oops, how about I, how about I get the whole thing in frame so that point makes sense. These note cards are just a little bit smaller, right? They're, I don't know, half an inch smaller on this side and probably three quarters of an inch smaller on that side. Like, so they're almost the same size. It just, it loses a little bit. So the answer to that is ribbon. Okay, so now we've got that. So now all I need to do, and some of these one sheet wonders, like the 12 by 12 piece, sometimes it'll make eight cards or 10 cards or something. Four cards is quite manageable. And if you just want to, as Tamara says, crack out a few birthday cards, pick a one sheet wonder because once you, like I said, once you have all your stuff out, you can use, you just need one ink pad, <laughs> one kind of ribbon. And if you were doing different card stock, which I generally do, I generally put layers behind everything. I'm totally going rogue tonight and doing, doing, uh, I'm practicing simple cards because um, <laughs> I actually have to practice. Um, but yeah, it, it's, this is just, it's, it's so much easier to do this and not have to drag out, you know, a wheelbarrow full of supplies. And look at how awesome these cards look together. This, this, by the way, is one of my favorite color combinations. Um, in this case, it's Daffodil Delight, Misty Moonlight, and White. But any kind of, like even navy blue and a little bit darker, you know, Crush Curry or something. This is not the right size circle. Um, okay. Let's see what other labels I have that will work. Okay. Embellishments it is. I'm going to put this a little bit higher. No, I'm not, because it'll bug me. I'm going to put it in the middle. I think this circle is a little bit bigger than the, the other one I used. Um, yeah, even if it's the darker crushed curry, I, uh, I just love blue, white, and yellow, basically. I'm going to put this. I'm, um, I have used this happy birthday from the, the poppy set. <laughs> Once again, resolution starts with the new annual catalog, which is the third of May, the poppy set. What's the poppy set called? No, sorry, I can't see for my ears and my eyes. Um, bet you don't hear that very often. My ears are in my eyes. Um, Peaceful Moments is the name of the set I was thinking of. The, the go-to sentiments, I'm glad it carried over, but this little happy birthday is the perfect size for most of these circles or like the smaller squares. I just love it. Okay, and then this one, this happy birthday, in case you're wondering, came from Celebrating You, which is the right name because I just cheated and looked at the box. Um, because I have called it Celebrating You, Celebration of You, Celebrate You. Is it you celebrating? What is that called? Yeah, it's called Celebrating You. So there we go. Boop. Um, now, Tamara, I did not totally lose my mind today. Um, Every one of my cards does have many dimensionals on it. <laughs> I might I might be able to make a simple card, but I cannot make a card without dimensionals. So every one of these sentiments gets popped up on dimensionals. Because that is how I roll. And then I'm going to oops, pull the back off that before I was ready. There we go. I'm going to decide which ones are having ribbon. And the ones that have ribbon, I will pop up the layer as well because I think that is a much neater look when you do it that way. These little bits I don't need to pull one there. <laughs> I usually put three on a circle just because if you put two, it sort of rocks back and forth. But if you put three, it's nice and stable. And why does that matter? Not sure, but I do like my cards to be solid. Uh, something as big as this is gonna get one in each corner. This is how you make your uh, dimensionals last longer. As soon as I open a brand new pack, like the, I open a brand new pack, I take the first dimensional off it because I'm usually running out of it and in the middle of something when I open a brand new pack. And then as soon as I finished whatever I was working on, I go around the entire border and cut all the border pieces in half. So all of the edge pieces here get like snipped up all the way around. So I have these like little half dimensional shapes and these little L's. So that in places where I don't want to get crazy with the dimensional, um, we have to think of our earth. Um, I, you know what made me think of that today? Actually, part of it is I'm like, well, I'm, I'm doing my part by not using as many dimensionals. Um, have you guys seen pictures of the Dakotas and the crazy weather that happened in the Dakotas? 
in the middle of April. Oh my goodness. They had so much snow, like blizzarding, filling up halfway up the living room windows. Um, there's pictures of these poor cows who are covered um, in ice and snow. It's, it's crazy. No, they just decided. Um, so yes, we have to be nicer because Mother Earth is mad at us. So we have to be nicer so she'll quit doing this stuff to us. Okay, so I've decided that I'm going to put ribbon on it, but I'm going to tie the ribbon around the right, sorry, the white, the yellow layer, not the white layer. So now I'm just going to put all my layers down. And I do like the, I like the wood grain behind anything. <laughs> I will tell you that. Um, <laughs> where did I do my, my dimensionals? There we go. Okay, so I'm going to not screw this up. I'm going to put down two dimensionals and then I'm going to realize that I should really plan out where my ribbon's going to go so that I don't put a dimensional right where I need my ribbon to go. And actually, now that I've done that and popped up this layer, I'm going to uh, reuse these dimensionals because I put them and they're not actually going to work where they are. They're going to hit right on the edge. So um, I'll just do a little recycling there. <laughs> okay. So this is going to go here. This is going to go here because I do want to put, oops, that's upside down. I do want to put a dimensional in, uh, in the middle so that my card doesn't sag, but I also want to be able to put my ribbon there. So I'm going to put my ribbon here. So this is what I do. I use my finger as my little, my little marking spot and I will make sure that my dimensional is above my finger. So how about I, how about I actually put the ribbon around before I put it down too? Look at me, I'm catching all my mistakes today. But I will tell you about all my mistakes so that you don't make all the same mistakes. Okay, you know, a little ribbon scissors, so I have nice cuts. So I'm going to put this on first because then I can do all my futzing with it. Because I, I don't I don't care as much about the like the knot, but I do like the two sides to be laying perfectly flat on either side. So now that I know which way that's going to go, I'll tie my little bow. And I'm tying my bow now because if I have to do any kind of adjustment, I'll do it before I stick the piece down. But my primping of my bow will come after the paper is in place because then it will quit moving on me. Because I know that my bow works successfully because I don't, sometimes when I tie my bow for all the best intentions, um, and I will end up with one side this long and one side this long. Like, oops, I'm not on the screen again. Um, one side will be like this long and one side will be this long. So I, I like to have a little bit more play than that. Okay, so now you're probably screaming at the t at the your computer, TV or whatever you're doing, saying, but Tracy, but no, I did that on purpose. I know I have one more piece to go, but I do want, there we go. I do want uh, my bow to be on and to be centered. This other little piece, I'm just going to tuck in anyways. And I'm actually going to do what Tamara did on hers. Um, and I'm going to guess this is what Brenda did. But I also noticed that uh, the ends were flagged. I didn't do it on the note card because I quite honestly forgot. But we're going to flag the ends on this one before we glue it down. But we're just, uh, I only need a bit. I'm putting a label over top of it. I don't, need to, I don't need to put a ton of adhesive on it. So I'm just going to put a bit of adhesive in the middle. So I will be able to slide it under the bow. That's why I waited. I wanted my bow done first. So little tip if you don't know, and I will forever remember Tammy Dumbar when I think of this um, and her learning this tip. Um, go into the very middle of your piece, cut down as far as, as deep as you want these flags to be. Oops, flags to be. So in this case, I want rather shallow ones. So I'm going down, I don't know, quarter of an inch. And then from the corner to where you cut, and the corner to where you cut, and you have a nice even flag. And if you do it right on both sides, you do the same like depth thing. Um, even both ends will be the same. Because I have cut DSP before where I've had to cut a second piece um, because I kept trying to make the ends even. And so I would trim one end and then the other end and then the other end and then the other end. And then pretty soon it's too short to use. <laughs> I know Tamara, I, the, the look on her face, I it just, it struck me as so funny at the time. And I just, I think of it every time somebody cuts a flag like that. Uh, Okay, 
See, that was easy. I put, and I did put two strips. Again, if you put one, sometimes it'll twist and I didn't want it to twist. So I'm going with two, there we go. But I only needed to have a little bit of it in the middle because it's not like it's going anywhere. And then this one, I'm going to do the same because I had to take my dimensionals off because it didn't work with the way the other one was. I think I, have a, I must have a piece of glue on my little piece of paper because everything keeps sticking to it. And then we're going to pop this bad boy down. And then because, because I like them so much, only this time I think I got to quit using the same color every time I do everything. Um, I don't actually know. <laughs> I have no idea, quite honestly, what colors these are. Um, I can see there's a Pacific Point, maybe a pool party. They're various shades of blue and they're gorgeous. And quite honestly, any one of these is going to work with this card because they seem to have all the different colors in here. And so I'm going to, <laughs> I'm going to pop one there. Which color did I just take this one? I'll pop one over there. I'm going to pop one down here. Puddle. So there's one card. Always in threes. I know Donna's not watching, but she'll be happy to know. It, I put three of them on. Okay, so where'd my other one go? So really, I did not do a lot different between these two cards. I flagged the ends. I remember it this time. And I added some ribbon. But either one of these, I would be equally happy to send or receive. Pop that off to the side. Uh, this one is our nice simple card. I might, I might put a little, uh, you know, I always find it really funny when I take something that it doesn't matter which side you use. And just because I have it laying this way, I flip it over to secure it. <laughs> I don't know why. All of a sudden I got conscious of the time there and I looked up and I just about, just about taped everything to the desk. So, distracted say ceiling. Okay, so we're gonna put that one down. And I'm going to, yeah, seriously, whatever this is on here, it's driving me crazy. There we go. Oh yes, the old adage. The good thing about paper is it has two sides. So I'm gonna put a little bit of that there and a little bit of that there and a little bit of it there. Once you get the hang of the seal, I really do like this seal. You just got to get the hang of it first. Uh, I'm going to show you something here. Wait a minute. So I, because I cut this the other way with the flower side up, I have a bit of a ridge on my paper, which I noticed just as I was sticking it down. Um, so normally I would do it, I'll do it on this one. Normally I would do it before I put it down, but you see you have like a little bit of a ridge there and it's just from the way it got cut. So before you put it down, if you just run your bone folder across the edge, or in this case, because it's already on my card, I'm just running my nail down the edge. Um, it will help you smooth off that little bit of a ridge you get from cutting it upside down. And then it will look like you cut it that way the whole time. I don't know if it's, I can, I can see the difference, but I'm not sure if it's showing up on camera, but trust me when I tell you, that's how you want to do it. Uh, what was I doing with this one? I was putting this off to the side. So I'm going to pop this guy on. And then, I don't know, I, you know, I really just, I quite like this one plain, or not plain, but simple. I like this one simple. I was going to throw a little bow on, not wrapped around or anything, but I don't think I'm going to. I'm just going to do this. And then I'm going to take these blue guys again, because I really like them. And which color am I going to use this time? How about I do one, a different one, every one of them? So we use this one. Because there's all these different tones of blue in here, I can get away with using all of them. Put that up there. Down here. Ta-da! Now where's the other one? Seriously, everything is in front of me. How come I can't find it? <laughs> Oops. Oh, you know why? Because the other one, I can't pee on it and totally distracted me. So there you go. There's the note card version. There go. My, my big head's in the way. Got the note card version and the greeting card version. Oh, I am, I am, I'm loving this. Like I said, I, I, have, I have to make a point to go back on and, and uh, comment on how much, I think I told Tamara at the time how much I like these, but um, she did it again. <laughs> actually, you know what? I'm not going to actually use that layer. Um, because I really don't need to, because I am just going to keep this one simple. What's that? What was that thing? Cast, clean and simple. There used to be a, when I first started, I remember that there was a, 
there was a group of that. And it was people, that was the whole goal was to go on there and put the clean and simple cards on there. And I struggled with them. They were always so hard to do. But I like to feel like I'm warming up to the simple cards. And I like them so much, like I said, when other people do them, I don't know why I have such a hard time. So again, I'm just, because I cut it the other way, I got a bit of a edge on here. I'll just smooth that little guy down. I was, I was for a brief moment there, I was considering popping this up on embellishment or on dimensionals, but I remember now that the um, sentiment is on, on dimensionals. This one does not need as much. <laughs> Just kind of went over the edge a little bit. Oh yeah, I just, these layouts are awesome. I just love them. Take my little dimensional off. Now, like I said, the other one I kind of went down, but I think this one I'm gonna go right in the middle of the square. There we go. And then I'm going to, I'm gonna go with the, not to, not to play favorites, but I'm gonna go with these, uh, the darker blue, because, well, I'll say it, they're my favorite. <laughs> Let's go with this one. I'm gonna put the little guy up there. I'm gonna put, by the way, I, I know I make it look so easy, uh, but the whole, the whole embellishment thing, I will tell you though, that the reason I have no problem like popping embellishments down on a card is because of Tamara, because I watched her years ago doing something and she said two in one spot, one in the other. And that simple little, little tip has made embellishing so much easier for me because I pop two down and then I pop one somewhere else. And it doesn't even seem to matter to me where I put them. I love them. So there you go. Thank you, Tamara. Two in one spot, one in the other. Ta-da, oops, off camera again. So there you go. Note card, full size card. Oh, we're down to our last one. How am I doing on time? Like, I'm gonna make it just under the wire. Okay, so this is what I did the last time when I was making the note card. I had them all laid out and then I pulled them all apart <laughs> to, uh, to, so that I could hear them down. And then I forgot what order I had them in. So what we're gonna do this time is we're gonna lay them out on the, on the table as soon as I put this piece down so that I can remember how I had them before I start gluing them down. <laughs> Now, based on where, where the other one go, based on this, I know I had this and this and this. And this will just save you because when I got to do it, and I like the way the other one turned out, but when I got to doing it, I was like, darn, I had something different. And this one, because I remember fussing with it already once um, to get things to line up properly. That was way too far apart. <laughs> yes, I'm pretty sure that's how I had it. So we are going to. And in this case, I'm just gonna put this little guy right here because he's too small to bother with. Put that out so I can get as much color going out there as I want. It's funny, sometimes if the pattern is dark enough, you don't even notice, but in this case, I have, uh, is it maybe because it's a pale yellow, I'm noticing every one of these edges now. <laughs> now that I noticed one, I am noticing them all. So this is also doesn't have to have quite as much on it because this down a little bit. I kind of centered that one, didn't I? Yep. Um, because the uh, there's so much going, there's so many layers going over top of this that all of the layers will help hold each other down. And of course, as you're doing this, if symmetry, I was going to say symmetry, symmetry bothers you, or like you need it to be symmetrical, then by all means do that. Uh, as you know, I'm a little off center. <laughs> I'm a little off. Um, I like things that are wonky. Sometimes certain things, yes, they do have to be lined up, but most of the time, no, I'm good with a little off. So just pick whichever layout you like. That was, like I said, that was the beauty of this one is it had lots of little pieces in it. I, I picked them all up off the table and once again, forgot what I was doing. So yes, I'm laying them out for the hopefully third and final time. So I can remember where I wanted these pieces. Um, but yeah, I liked how I liked how different this layout was with all these little pieces. There we go. That's what that's what I was going for. So this time, 
I'm going to use my finger to hold that piece in place because I know that this corner, this top corner here, was lined up with this piece. Straight would be good, but so at least now I know that that's where that one went. And then this one I don't have to worry about because that one's there now. And then we're going to pop this guy on. Yeah, like I said, I'm certain there's so many good things coming out in the new catalog, and I'm so excited about so much of it. Um, but there are a few things that I'm just like, oh, I'm sad to see those leave. I'm actually going to offset this thing too, so I can see more of that yellow. Ta -da. Now, because I have such a big label on this one, seriously, what I do with my ribbon? There we go. <laughs> this ribbon is completely white on both sides, and it totally blended into all the white paper that you cannot see that is just off the side. I am this time, instead of wrapping it around, I am just going to make a little bow that I can tuck under the edge of this guy. Because you know I'm so trendy. <laughs> yes, those who know me know that is totally not the truth. Um, but I've heard it in about probably three or four different places now that the trend is to tuck your embellishments under the edge of something. As it turns out, in the case of a bow, if your bow is not cooperating with you and you can't get the little, like the little ears, <laughs> I'm not sure why I'm thinking of ears tonight, but if you can't get the little ears or whatever these things are called to go the way you want, you just tuck it underneath the edge and you, and you make it go the way you want as you tuck it under. This one is twisted. That is why I'm fussing with this bow because one is twisted. There we go. Perfect. I'll just trim those so they're the same. Nope. Same ish. <laughs> World's best adhesive ever, the glue dot. Okay, so I have been watching other demonstrators, Tamara in particular, but other demonstrators go through and talk about how frustrating it is to have this roll of glue dots where the glue dot is on the like on the flap instead of on the actual roll. This is the first roll I have hit that has had that problem. And oh dear Lord, I'm tempted to just say, nope, <laughs> uh, it is so frustrating. And I'm just so grateful that uh, I did not have more than one because oh my goodness, they are annoying. Um, I kind of like it up on there. You know what? I kind of like it right on the corner of the label. So that's where it's going. So I'll just put my little, a little glue dot down, pop my ribbon on. And having a ribbon does not mean we don't have a little jewel because like I said, these jewels are just too luscious. So I do, I, now, now in, in hindsight, I am thinking this particular color is just a bit too a green for me, but I do like this one. So I said I was gonna tuck it under and then there I went and stuck it right on top. But apparently I'm not trendy. But once again, two down there, one up there. Oh, you know what I just realized? <laughs> oh yes, I was trying to be so conservative of the, of the adhesive. And I'm thinking, why is my little thing going everywhere? Because that had so much on here, I only put glue on the top and the bottom. So this little piece that I said, I'm just gonna tuck under because I figured it would just catch this adhesive. Yeah, I never actually put adhesive there. So I will just stick a little bit of adhesive on there. It's not going to stay on my cart for very long. And then we'll just tuck that right back in there. Ta -da! There you go. So a little more embellished on the bigger cards. Where'd the other one go? There we go. So we actually, I'm going to have to post these and say who wore it best <laughs> and compare the note card to the full size card. But there you go, folks. Oh, look at that, I'm coming in just under time. I'm gonna clean up my desk here for a minute so I can, uh, I, can manage to, I managed to amass a lot of stuff on my desk in a very short amount of time. Let me get this out. So there we go. There's our one sheet wonder. And so using the same, the same little cut plate or cut map, we got four very cool cards using the same suites and colors of products in short order that you can now bundle together and give as a gift or send on their merry way individually. Um, I love it. One sheet wonders.
that's where it's at, folks. Okay, I am going to uh, let you guys all go so I can stay in under my one hour limit. Self-imposed. Nobody's gonna, you know, come kick me off or anything. I'm gonna have to futz with my this little bow a little bit more because it's not working for me. But I will, I will do that later <laughs> without you guys all having to watch me futz with my bow. I think it's because, see, this is the part. These pieces are sticking straight out and I want them to go down. So it will likely be glue dots to the rescue, but I'll putz later. So there we go. I will put the measurements for the bases, the layers, and the, the picture of the card map with all the cut dimensions on it on my blog this weekend. And I will post all these pictures. And um, then you guys go ahead and make your own. Uh, I took these bees out and then forgot to use them. Uh, you guys go and make your own one sheet wonders and post your pictures and then we can all get good ideas for different pattern papers to use, colors to use, layouts. If anybody switches this up a little bit, it'd be nice to see. So. Happy crafting, everybody. Have a lovely Easter. Uh, did you know it was Easter? Um, have a lovely Easter weekend. We have the next five days off because it's Easter weekend plus a PD day on Tuesday. So that equates to five days with no alarm clock. Um, other than the four-legged uh, wet-nosed alarm clock, five days without an alarm clock. So have a great Easter, everybody. We will uh, be back here talking to you, I guess, on Tuesday afternoon. Take care. Thanks for coming. <laughs>